Hello, we are Team 24, and today we are presenting the impact of information technology on cities, and specifically how this impacts the environment. The start of the Industrial Revolution in the mid-1700s marked a major change in the Earth's climate and a new geological time period. This entirely human-caused motion, executed through machines, factories, and especially the advent of computer technology in the 1950s, has led to many irreversible environmental changes. The featured image indicates the current landscape of southern Ontario and New England lit up at night, the outcome of centuries of infrastructure development and human technology. A significant consequence of the rise of information technology is increased electricity consumption. This is particularly reflected in the rise of internet users by a factor of 1,000 since 2007, as well as a rise in mobile devices which require electricity for charging. Each year, electricity demand increases by 16 to 20 percent. This in turn causes increased CO2 emissions and climate change, as there is still a large dependence on fossil fuels to generate electricity. IT has also led to a significant amount of waste from electronic hardware. Cities and countries such as India and China have markets entirely based on the recycling of electronic waste to recover precious metals and transistors. However, the workers who do so are exposed to noxious gases which can cause increased lead levels and even fatality. In this way, IT is negatively impacting the health of these communities with compromised economies. With ride-sharing companies such as Uber and Lyft becoming more prominent in today's major cities, there also comes the question of the impact this trend has on the environment. Some researchers, such, such as those from the University of California, Berkeley, have used IT to claim that ride-sharing has a positive impact, namely in more densely populated cities such as San Francisco, LA, and New York. They base their preliminary claims on the following. One, that Uber and Lyft drivers are constrained to using newer vehicles, which are less pollutive than older cars. Two, that these companies promote sharing rides with other passengers, effectively reducing the amount of cars on the road. Three, that with more Uber and Lyft drivers, the demand for personally owning a car is inclined to decrease. And four, that people may also be motivated to use public transit if a ride-sharing service is available in these stops. A counter-argument here is that those who take trips with Uber or Lyft are more often to go out than if this service was not available, hereby creating more of an environmental impact. Yet, information technology also has the potential to reverse its environmental impact. Current research initiatives aim to improve the way we use technology by measuring energy usage and using this to plan environmentally responsible neighborhoods. A notable example of this is Sidewalk Lab's contribution to the Waterfront Toronto project. It includes a generative design tool to enable users to design neighborhoods and view the corresponding environmental impact. In turn, planning de departments and cities can better design environmentally friendly cities. Sidewalk Lab is also researching smart grid technology, which can enhance existing electrical distribution networks. This assesses the best way to deliver energy from its source to the consumer. Energy sources can range from nuclear or stable sources, hydro or swing sources, and renewable energy sources such as solar and wind, which are intermittent. Smart grid technology works to include intermittent energy sources whenever possible. In other words, it includes a multitude of power sources and reduces vulnerability points that improve upon the one plant per area model that is prominent in today's city infrastructure. Insight on AI in the context of the environment can be gained from electrical and computer engineering professor Mark Crowley, who specifically researches AI and machine learning. Like climate change is a big problem, right? Um, and um, to make progress on uh, um, tackling climate change and improving our society, um, uh, our response to it um, is to kind of break it down into kind of smaller components. Um, so one thing people focus on is the um, UN Sustainability, Sustainable Development Goals, um, which have kind of very concrete kind of different aspects um, and metrics and goals um, to, to address different things. Um, and so the, the different goals listed in that way, you could imagine um, AI being used to kind of tackle different aspects of it, right? So um, most of those um, goals, you need to improve your ability to predict, you know, weather or, or impacts of policies in society on the environment um, or on our sustainable kind of energy usage. Um, and so prediction and decision making and optimization are things that AI can help with. Um, with forest fire, forest fire specifically, we look at trying to build better models of predicting forest fire spread directly from you know, satellite data, weather data, other data has been collected to help improve on models that people have used. And AI can, can do that because it's, it's good you know, 
taking in a lot of information and learning a new model and giving it predictions. Um, it can also be used to make decisions. So if you give it the goals and the, the targets that you want to achieve, you can try to optimize the policy. To conclude, smart technology is on its way to helping humans make better decisions when it comes to the environment and how we plan our cities, but only if we prioritize environmental impacts and the application of a given technology. Thank you for listening to our discussion. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them below.